Okay. Well, first of all, hi guys. How are you doing? Hey, <laughs> we're good. You? Thank you. Good. Thanks. So this is so exciting. New Marvel TV show. Uh, but what what about this series do you want viewers to know before before they sit down and watch Hellstrom for the first time? Well, I I would start by saying I think we are sort of we've built a whole new wing on the Marvel Mansion, that is this horror realm, and I think as long as fans are prepared to be profoundly terrified, um, mm. I think they will have. A blast, but it is it is frightening. It is horror, and it is really fun. Yeah, I would follow on that. It's it's uh, it's not about superpowers, um, but it's about the dark side of all of our lives, and uh, and it's horrific what we have put together on this show. It's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's really, I mean, and the thing is, is that as you enter, the door is locked behind you, so you don't get out, and yeah. uh, you don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Uh, nobody's going to come save you. <laughs> so it's it's about something that Marvel, you know, fans have never experienced. Um, you know, it's just, you know, a Kafka-esque one way out kind of thing. Robert, I kind of want to pick up on one of the things you were saying and talk about Caretaker in particular, because, you know, he, he seems really caught between the, like, he's compassionate. I've seen the first five episodes. He seems like a very compassionate man, but he's sort of ended up in this really grim line of work. So I'm, I'm wondering how you sort of struck a balance between those two aspects of the characters as you were sort of developing your own sense of him. Well, that's... Um... That's one of the, the special things about um, uh, Caretaker and all the other characters. Everyone is their own twin. Everyone is their own good and bad. And that's where the battle is throughout. Um, you know, seemingly on the surface, uh, Caretaker is um, a good person. But you gradually real, you know, question, wait a minute, whose side is he on? And... And that becomes really deeper. And even in his own mind, he questions and he has those, those nice long nights of the soul where his faith in everything uh, gets put on the line. And uh, sometimes you do go with the devil, if, the, if I can use that term. Um, so that's, so that's, that's um, because you have to. And, and that's, uh, that was a, the great beautiful challenge of, of being part of this ensemble to, to uh, not only save my soul, but try to save another soul. And uh, you realize you can't do either one. You know, there's a greater force at work. So Elizabeth, picking up off of what Robert was saying, I mean, she, Victoria's twin is literally, like there are two characters living inside this, this one body. So I was wondering, mm -hmm. you know, aside from the voice, which I, which, wow, and also I know you've talked about it, like, <laughs> how did you subtly differentiate your performances of, of Victoria and Cathara? Well, um, you know, it, it's, it's such actor candy, this role. And it's sort of like getting to play all of the keys on the piano. And it's so much fun. Um, but as far as... Uh, differentiating i mean the the thing that i most enjoyed was when i was in that territory where they were sort of bleeding into each other where you're with victoria this very nurturing mother and then you see this creeping darkness start to bite at the edges and i really love to play around in that area when it wasn't sort of left or right but somewhere in the center um because then uh the audience, of course, has no idea where it's going, but also my children have no idea where it's going. And I think it's something that is profoundly terrifying to see a parent that is emotionally untrustworthy, emotionally unstable, emotionally a trickster. Uh, that, that is a kind of archetypical horror that is uh, even, even deeper and more profound that we got to experiment with.
So on the flip side of that, I was wondering if there was an aspect of your individual characters that you relate to the most and why? Um, yes, the, the demonic, absolutely. <laughs> No, um, I, I relate to my character sort of all sides of it uh, because I do have great darkness and rage inside of me. Um, I try to keep that in control, but I also have unlimited wells of compassion and care as a mother. So yes, I relate to my character sort of on all sides. Yeah, I, I find it uh, the same. I mean, I the there's a, a, a part of my heart that is compassionate, but the other side is there's an arrogance there that I think I can control things. And, and, uh, uh, and then as that control slips away, I put on the mask and act like I can. Um, and that's constantly what happens is uh, I caretaker continually tries to reset, reset, reset to see how he can manage this world that's out of control. And so it becomes a metaphor for the show in a sense, because there's no control. And, um, and, and as that whole thing begins to implode, um, it just puts the lie to a kind heart, you know, and what a good heart can accomplish. So, so it's, you know, I relate to all of that, you know, even though my life feels normal, it's not. You know. <laughs> So I'm from a comic book outlet specifically, and our readers are always so interested to know what kind of research you did to prepare for this. So like, can you tell me a little bit, maybe if you picked up a comic book yourself or what you did to prepare for this role? Well, I, I am deeply embedded in the Marvel universe. I have a 14 year old son who has been engaged with it since he could read. Um, so yeah, I know a few comic books <laughs> and when I got this job, he was thrilled and showed me son of Satan. And we started going through that and then steered me towards Dr. Strange and Ghost Rider and all of the branches of this cosmic world that we're now in. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty well steeped in, in the territory. Mm. Yeah, I think, um, my personal, uh, it wasn't comics directly, but I have a real fascination in the esoteric and, and magic, high magic. So, uh, you know, exploring grimoires and exploring uh, old, old knowledge like that, spells and, and implements and ritual. Uh, it, was, it was my own sort of Indiana Jones kind of thing to, to dive into, uh, into this world. It gave me, it, it, it really, it made me feel as if the part was made for me. Well, tis the season after all, but mm -hmm. looks like that's all I've got time for today. Thank you so much for joining me and talking about Hellstrom and good luck with the rest Thanks. of your, your lunch. Thank you, Thank Megan. Thank you, Megan. Bye. See ya. Bye.